Well, good morning. morning. I like that. It's Saturday morning. You're giving up your Saturday morning to come listen to and get an update on our process for the Park Recreation and Open Space Master Plan for the City of Fort Worth Parks and Community Services Department. Again, I want to express my appreciation on behalf of our board and our staff uh, for you taking time on the Saturday morning to come down here. Um, where we are in this process, our first master plan, and you'll see in a minute, was actually 1909, done by Kessler, and we've had subsequent plans to that. But in 1998, we shifted to a more needs assessment, need-based plan to help position us to be able to be competitive primarily for grants, uh, both at the state level and the national level, and you hear a little bit more about that, how we've done that, but it also uh, does measures that are based on the National Recreation and Park Association, as well as the American Academy for Park and Recreation Administration. So uh, it sets standards. Uh, it helps us plan better uh, from the standpoint of both taking care of existing infrastructure and addressing growth in the community. It drives policies such as our neighborhood uh, uh, park dedication policy, which helps us keep up with growth both in neighborhood parkland and community parkland. And I'll just stay on that in that it helped adjust that policy, which was actually established in 1978, so that we were not only picking up neighborhood parkland, but in 2000 there was a significant change, which enabled us to pick up both neighborhood parkland and funds for community parkland. And the result of that policy change in 2000 is that in 2010, we were able to assemble enough funding to make a purchase of $7 million for a 245-acre community park, uh, which is now called Northwest Community Park up at 156 in Harmon Road. And let me just carry that a little bit further. We use the land value to apply for a Texas Parks and Wildlife Department grant. We receive that grant, $1 million, that's enabling us to do our first phase development. And because of that springboard and the need for uh, based on our uh, needs assessment, uh, athletic facilities in that far northern area. The recent bond program appropriated $2.6 million for us to do that. And we get to fire another bullet in the Parks and Wildlife Grant competition. And uh, we submitted a grant application this past summer for that same project. So we'll know whether we'll receive that grant in January when the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission uh, meets and awards those grants. So I just tell you that short story to kind of explain how this whole process helps position us to leverage alternative funding. Uh, in the end, uh, whatever we do has to be supported by resources and to sustain it, and that's something you'll hear me say co constantly is whatever you build, you got to take care of, and so we want to make sure that we're being good stewards in that regard. Let me make a couple of quick introductions. We have some members of our Parks and Community Services Advisory Board with us today. Sheila here is back here. She is the chair of the board. Chase Dustin is up here on the front row. He is uh, place seven. And uh, Diane Criswell is in the back and she is uh, place three. And I'm not sure if we had any other board members show up today. They have worked on this process. We briefed them on September 24th at a work session uh, talked about how we go through the update uh, and talk a lot about trends, which you'll see in, here in a minute in the presentation. But this is really a report out. And the last thing I'll say is in the 98 process and in the 2004 process, again, we base our, our uh, information on our needs assessment and input that we receive through technology um, and through the board. But uh, the staff came to me and said, you know, the last two times we didn't really do a report out in this process. We think it would be a good idea to do that. So hats off to them to take in the initiative to say, let's get everybody together. And this invitation went out to uh, the League of Neighborhoods, but also all of our support groups, uh, people that we work with, the Sports Advisory Council, the Botanical Society, the Fort Worth Garden Club, the Friends of the Nature Center. I could go on. We couldn't do the kinds of things that we do in the Fort Worth Park System if it weren't for folks that get involved and help support us in many ways. So with that, I'd like to turn this over to Joel McElhaney, and Joel is the, uh, I guess, the architect of this process, and his staff is here. And after this meeting, this report out, we'll continue to have uh, an opportunity for folks to provide input and uh, to visit with staff as well. So Joel, 
Thank you, and I echo Richard's sentiments. I greatly appreciate you all taking time out of your weekend, your Saturday, to come out here today. Obviously, there's a lot of passion for parks, and uh, that's good for us, because without your passion for parks, uh, we wouldn't have a job. So I uh, really appreciate you all coming. What we're gonna go through today, our Park Recreation Open Space Master Plan, Richard gave a great description of what it is, how it's used, and he even gave a little bit of the history of it. I'm gonna repeat a little bit of that and just give that overview of what the master plan is, what uh, some of the inputs are that uh, we consider in making recommendations within the master plan. A uh, little snapshot of demographic change in the population growth we've experienced over the last 15 years. Uh, go through our public input process. Um, we're meeting here today, uh, but and there is a, an online survey available, but that's uh, not really the start of our public input process. It started back in 2013 with the needs assessment study, and I'm going to go through that, uh, what, what's happened there to date. Uh, the, uh, next, we're going to look at some of the facility standards, and I just want to explain how we, how we arrive at standards of parkland uh, to population or athletic fields or other facilities like playgrounds, trails to population. I want to explain where that uh, comes from. And we'll look at some of the emerging trends, some of the new park recreation resources that we're seeing out there that people are asking for, uh, it may be in neighboring cities, it may be around the country. And uh, last, I'll go through the schedule for uh, the plan from today through when we anticipate bringing this to our city council for adoption. The purpose of the plan, so why do we put time and resources into developing this plan? Richard touched on this a little bit. Basically, this, the, the master plan, our park recreation open space master plan, provides that framework or vision for providing park and recreation resources to our community in the city of Fort Worth. By identifying our needs and prioritizing those needs, we can be st strategic about putting funding toward future capital improvements. But, and also our master plan allows us to partner with other organizations in providing those resources. We, we identify our mission and we can partner with nonprofit groups like Streams and Valleys or our friends of groups. We have friends of Tandy Hills, friends of the Fort Worth Nature Center, there's a botanic society that's active here at the Botanic Gardens. Uh, there's also other public agencies like Tarrant Regional Water District or the various independent school districts that we can partner with on projects as well and provide uh, recreational resources to the community. And last, grant applications. Uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, Richard, Richard mentioned, uh, we've been successful in, in our applications for Texas Parks and Wildlife grants. And last, uh, since 2010, the last four years, we've applied for four grants, uh, and we've been the highest scoring application on all four of those applications. That totaled $3.1 million. And we, we actually have another application in, Richard mentioned, uh, in late August, we submitted another application, million dollar application for Northwest Community Park up in North Fort Worth. And that uh, jury's out on that one yet. We'll find out in January whether or not we received that, uh, received that funding. History of the plan, and Richard mentioned the first park master plan, citywide master plan, was developed in 1909 by George Kessler. We call it the Kessler Plan. And Kessler, the Kessler Plan and the subsequent 1930-1957 Har and Har plans, they really laid out that vision for some of our core parks within the city. Uh, the uh, Trinity Park, Foster Park, Cobb Park on the east side, Rock Springs Park, which later changed names to the Fort Worth Botanic Garden, were all included in that plan, many other parks as well. But those, uh, sort of those core parts of our system were, were identified in those master plans. In 1991, the city commissioned its first needs assessment study, and that was the foundation of the 1992 Park and Recreation Department strategic plan. It, so from that, from that plan, we, we changed and we became more strategic in our citywide master plan for parks. They were always based on a needs assessment. We got that public input before doing the master plan. We identified a mission statement, goals and objectives. We identified needs and we prioritized those needs in all these plans, 92, 98, 2004, the 2010 update, and we're following suit today. We did a needs assessment study in 2013. I'll get in and I'll explain what, what all went into that and how that was put out there. But that is the uh, foundation for the 2015 master plan. What's all included in the plan are uh, we in goals and objectives. I mentioned we have a departmental mission statement. Of course, there's a citywide mission statement. We have a department mission statement 
We have goals and objectives to help us realize that mission. We identify the park or the plan development process, what all went into this. We identify our park facility standards. I'll talk about those here in a couple slides. Uh, we inventory our park facilities. You gotta know what you have before you start thinking about what you need. So we include an inventory of our current parks and park facilities. Uh, a needs assessment, I mentioned that a couple times now. The 2013 needs assessment and all the public input we received through the 2014 bond program and the survey that's available today, that will go into the master plan as well. And last, we prioritize those needs based on uh, public input and goals and objectives. Some of these inputs uh, that uh, go into the plan's recommendations include uh, the uh, public input, of course, the staff input. We have people out in the parks every day maintaining parks, working in community centers, uh, managing capital improvement projects, building new park facilities, uh, and administering our park dedication policy. It, people that are actively working in the park. So they have input as well that's considered in the plan. We look at trends, um, nationwide trends and, and uh, resource uh, park facilities, it, some new things that were coming online. I'm gonna touch on those at the end of the presentation here. These are things we're seeing in neighboring cities and they're things we're hearing from the public that they wanna see here in the city of Fort Worth. We also consider national standards. As park professionals, our, our national association is the National Recreation and Park Association, and, or the NRPA. And that group has facility standards that they recommend for level of service of parkland based on population or facilities such as playgrounds, athletic fields, and uh, uh, trails. Facility standards based on population that they recommend at a national level. We, of course, take into consideration what our own priorities are that we hear from you and what some of our neighboring cities, their level of service. So we take that in consideration and, and make it fit for the city of Fort Worth. We have federal mandates in particular, the Americans with Disabilities Act has requirements on accessibility trails or playgrounds that we have to consider in uh, including recommendations in our master plan. And last, demographics. And on that, I, I just wanted to highlight just very briefly here, um, you all may have noticed, there's a lot of population going on, growth going on in the city of Fort Worth here. The, um, the population hovered around 400,000 for several decades. In 2005, we had a population of 534,000. And currently, the estimate is 781,000. So we do the math on that, we've added 250,000 people, or a quarter million people have been added to the population of the city of Fort Worth. Obviously, there's an increase in need for parkland, neighborhood and community parks for these new residents, and there's uh, a possibility that our priori priorities may change. We have a bunch of new, new opinions with 250,000 people added in, so, our, so it's important that we go back and update this plan and uh, you know, identify what those new priorities are. The public input process for the 2015 plan didn't start today with this meeting and it didn't start a few days ago when we got our online survey posted on the, the city website. It started in 2003 with a needs assessment study. Our department commissioned a, a professional survey group to, uh, to conduct this needs assessment study, and this group mailed out 20,000 qu questionnaires throughout the city, randomly chosen residents. Uh, there was an option of completing it online or mailing the survey back in. The survey then was also posted on the City of Fort Worth website and linked on the, the Facebook page for the City of Fort Worth and Downtown Fort Worth, Inc. And uh, we, it was also mailed out to the registered neighborhood organizations. And that's something I wanted to highlight here that um, if you're in a, an HOA, it, you, you should really check if your HOA is registered with the City of Fort Worth as a registered neighborhood organization. Mm -hmm. Michelle Goot at the front uh, is our director of communications. Um, she was just to the right when you walked in the front door there, and her, her group uh, sends out those communication to registered neighbor groups. If, you don't, if your group is not registered, we don't have your information, and we can't get the information out to you, so that's important to check on. Next, uh, additional public uh, input was through the 2014 bond program. You all may have attended, if you took time out of your day here on Saturday, you all may have attended some of the public meetings, we had 31 of them, that went into the 2014 bond program. 
there was also an opportunity to provide input for through the um, city website. It was yourfortworth.com. That was the, the link they, they established for that. So we all that public input was documented. And just as importantly, we identified what meeting that input came from. So if it, if it was a meeting on the east side or north side or south side, that, that's along with the comment. So we have that data that we can also consider in prioritizing needs. And last, we have our, our survey that's currently posted online. We mirrored the needs assessment questions. And the purpose of this is we're, get, we're getting the word out there. We're going to move through several steps here before this plan goes to city council and we seek their adoption. And I'll go through that process, that schedule at the end. But um, we, uh, since we're having this public meeting, we know there's, there's opinions out there and we want to give the people a, an opportunity to memorialize those comments and opinions in a survey. So we got that online. It was linked last week. We're going to continue to run that for another two weeks after this meeting. So I encourage you all to complete that and also uh, tell your friends, neighbors about it and uh, so they can fill that out as well. Some of the evolving needs we have, I just wanted to highlight here. Uh, in 2004, our needs assessment study, the number one identified need down there was restrooms and large parks. And there was some of the, your other typical facilities like playgrounds and picnic shelters. But in 2013 needs assessment study, the number one was hike and bike trails. Number two is open space. Th these weren't even in the top five, so they're number one and two now, but they weren't back there in 2000, 2004, excuse me. Uh, they weren't in that needs assessment in 2004. So that, uh, that's just a, a little glimpse at how needs change. The um, park facility standards, I wanted to go through just some of the, the contents of the plan and uh, also we'll mention the 2004 plan, the 2010 update are available online on the city website. We have a parks and community services webpage and you can, you can uh, view those documents there. We also put several copies at the front a little sticker on there, please return to table. That's just because we wanted people to, you know, everybody to be able to see that. And if one walks out of the building, it's really no big deal. But we did want to give everybody the opportunity to take a look at it. Um, the, our park facility standards are identified in there. So if you get a chance to go through that plan, you can, you can take a look at these. These standards include a, a ratio of parkland, neighborhood and community parkland based on population. They also include facility standards for other other items. I mentioned this before, like soccer fields, baseball fields, uh, playgrounds, or tennis courts. Those are all population-based standards. One of the things we're considering for this year's 2015 plan is some geographic-based standards for facilities. For example, a dog park. It may not make sense to, to have a population-based standard for a dog park, but it does make sense to provide dog parks throughout the city geographically. And we currently have the Fort Whoop Dog Park in East Fort Worth, it's very popular. We're building our second dog park in North Zebos Park in West Fort Worth. It would, it, a, a, a geographic based standard to include, uh, to provide dog parks in each quadrant of the city is it, something that we're considering right now. Other uh, classifications you'll see in there are uh, definitions of our park facilities, of our definition of our pocket park, which is a one to five acre park or neighborhood park, five to 20 acres, community park, 20 to 75 acres, and then our regional parks are 70 acres plus. An example of a community park would be Gateway Park. That, that type of park, there's just multiple facilities in there. There's our artificial turf, uh, soccer and rugby complex. There's natural surface uh, soccer fields. There's uh, Fort Wolf Dog Park, I mentioned, and uh, just uh, several facilities in one park and that, uh, makes it that, uh, moves it to that regional park classification. Um, community parks typically have athletic fields and their destinations. People drive there, they have a parking lot. It's, it becomes, um, it, it, it provides a service that you don't find in your neighborhood park. And that neighborhood park is where we typically have our playgrounds, picnic shelters, a walking trail. Uh, these are typically in the neighborhood, no parking because people walk there. That's anticipated that they would they would walk to this type of park. And the same with the, the smaller pocket park, that would be one embedded in the neighborhood and people can walk there. We also have special use facilities on here. The, um, that, that would be your singular use type parks like a golf course. 
Now, one of the changes we're looking at to park classifications we're considering is the addition of green belts. Uh, the, um, the parks we get in, outside the loop in developing areas often are adjacent creeks or drainage ways, and they become an opportunity to create a linkage between parks with a trail. And as we saw in 2013 needs assessment, trails were the number one uh, ranked uh, priority. Um, however, there's also that need to provide neighborhood park as well because people want their, uh, the playground and a space for a practice field and that sort of thing. So having a classification for a green belt is something that we're considering uh, adding to this year's master plan. Another other park facility considerations we got to take into account are, are more dense areas. Uh, and um, Fort Worth is a big city and I'll talk about that when I get into defining our park planning districts. We're, uh, we have older infrastructure that's more dense, areas that are being re revitalized and um, new growth in the, in the inner city, and we have growth in the outer city, and the needs in the inner city are gonna be different than outside the loop. The, um, one of the considerations is how we provide open space in a more dense area where the cost of land is more expensive. The pocket park is defined as a one acre park. It may be cost prohibitive, to acquire one acre in some of these more dense areas. But people that live in those areas still need that close to home park or open space that they can, they have, they can have access to. So that's a couple considerations for this 2015 plan, the addition of the green belt, park classification, and how we provide open space and in the uh, more dense areas. The park and recreation open space master plan is, a, is that framework providing park and recreation resources citywide. But we're a big city, 349 acres, a population near 800,000. We have new development happening outside the loop. We have redevelopment happening in the inner city and higher density areas. So it's impossible to really create that one size fits all. So we've defined these park planning districts in, for us to be able to rank priorities specific to geographic area. The, um, you can get a closer look at these park planning districts out there on the boards. But just to show you on here, I mean, this whole colored map, that's the city of Fort Worth. The park planning districts are around here, one in South Fort Worth, two in West, three is the east side, four is everything within the loop, and five is North Fort Worth. Uh, so I just, just visually, I wanted to give you that, that idea. These, these boundaries do not follow political lines. They, they don't overlap with council districts. The, it, the purpose is meant to be apolitical. Uh, but within the, within the master plan, you, you'll notice that back in 2004 and in the 2010 update and in the 2015 plan, we rank priorities based on park planning district. So again, what, what matters to the people up in park planning district five, what's a high priority up here, may not be the same as what's in the central city or out in East Fort Worth. Priorities may be different. Uh, they are different, and that's why we rank them independently. Last, I'll get into just some of the new trends. It's kind of the fun part of the presentation. <laughs> so uh, what are we seeing? What are we hearing about? Uh, what are people asking for? People go to other cities, go to Arlington, Dallas, or they travel across the country, and they come back and say, hey, we got to have that here in Fort Worth. Some of these specialized facilities, disc golf, we've seen that for a couple decades now. City now has four disc golf courses, uh, but something new is foot golf. That's something... Uh, I just heard about about six months ago. You uh, use a soccer ball instead of a golf ball, uh, use your foot instead of a uh, golf club, and thankfully they made the cup bigger, so uh, we all have a chance. But um, so foot golf is new. We have one football course, a golf course at Rockwood, golf, or yeah, one course at Rockwood Golf Course. Nancy's nodding, so I know I'm right. <laughs> so uh, we, we added that. Another, uh, another new uh, sport is futsal, or at least it's new. We're hearing about it uh, um, more recently. Futsal is similar to soccer. You use a smaller ball. It's played on a hard court. It can be played indoors or outdoors. And it uh, uses smaller goals and fewer number of players. So it takes up a smaller footprint. And we now have some people using tennis courts for futsal courts. And so that's something that's new and we're hearing more about. And next, the um, other specialized facilities, dog parks. I mentioned Fort Wolf a couple times. And uh, we have, of course, the new, new dog park at uh, North Zebos and West Fort Worth. It's going to be, it's under construction here. 
And, uh, but skate parks is something more relatively new. We have a great new skate park uh, over in the east side in Arlington, you know, it kind of galls me to say it. But we have $600,000 allocated out of a $3.8 million in 2014 bond program for a skate park facility in, in uh, South Fort Worth at Chisholm Trail Community Park. Uh, so they, we're hearing that. People are traveling around, they're seeing some great skate park facilities, and they're, they want to see that type of facility here in Fort Worth. We built some smaller skate parks, or, or we built one, excuse me, at Marine Park in North Fort Worth. This is, uh, could be classified as a skate pocket. Uh, that's a, a smaller, almost like a pocket park, but it's a, just a smaller skate park facility. But there's a, we're, we're hearing about skate parks all the time. And uh, on this list here, last one is Universal Playgrounds. All of our parks meet the Americans with Disability Act guidelines or requirements, and they provide a, a variety of uh, play resources that stimulate your, uh, different senses. The um, Universal Playground does this at a much larger scale, provides those play components that stimulate senses like touch and sound and uh, visual uh, insight. The um, play components off also include ramps that allow access throughout the play structure, typically. So they're a bigger type playground and they become a destination. And that's uh, our first universal playground was built back in the early 90s at Patricia LeBlanc Park. The 2014 bond program included funding for the replacement of that playground. Uh, next, the outdoor fitness. We, uh, we've been using parks for fitness as long as there's been parks because that was the original purpose of the public park is for, uh, to get outside and and uh, live a healthy life. But um, something we're, we're seeing a little more of is organized fitness classes within our parks. Uh, we have agreements with several of the boot camp instructors. They lead classes out at uh, Trinity Park and various parks. They, these are things like CrossFit training. And um, we have installed fitness equipment in some parks. Rosemont Park has uh, the exercise equipment out there. And, um, it, and that's something we're hearing. There's a need for that. The, the fixed equipment and also the organized instruction. And the last one I'll talk about for emerging trends is just technology, because you really couldn't get away with about talking about an update without talking about changing technology. Um, we used to call it orienteering, and we'd use a compass, and we'd go out to a park, and we'd try to find our way around. Um, now, and something relatively new, it's been around for 10 or plus years, is geocaching. People are using a GPS unit to find uh, you know, a node or a hidden treasure, that sort of thing, out in public parks. Uh, a couple more new technology trends are drones. Of course, in the war effort, we, uh, that's when we first heard that term, but now you can buy a drone at Walmart or Amazon.com, and we know there, people are, they're gonna look to their public park to uh, fly the drone, and that we just have to be conscious of potential conflicts between that mm -hmm. and other park uses. And last, uh, apps or phone applications. Uh, the picture on the bottom right here is Fresh Kills Park in New York. Uh, people, there, there's so many apps out there, they just expect it now. Uh, the, uh, the, this app for Fresh Kills New York includes wayfinding information, interpretive information uh, that people have. So that's something we have to be conscious of, that there's gonna be interest in that. Okay, as I wrap up here, I'm gonna go through the, uh, the schedule taking this plan through uh, adoption. We met with our park board in a work session on September 24th, and we made a presentation to the Development Advisory Council in, on uh, October 20th, and the Development, uh, excuse me, the Development Advisory Committee, that group is made up of the developers that are out there building the new housing, whether it be uh, re, um, the revitalizing areas within the city and the more dense type areas or uh, new development, greenfield development, they call it out in the outlying areas. The, um, it, it's important to get their input because uh, the, after, we, uh, after this plan is adopted, it's the basis for a park dedication policy and that is a, a policy for uh, providing parkland for future residents as new housing is built, whether it be in the central city or out in uh, outside the loop, there's a, a fee that developer pays for a neighborhood and for the provision of neighborhood and recreation parkland and park development uh, for the new residents that are gonna be living in those homes. 
The, uh, the next step after today's meeting is going to be to go back to Park Board for a work session. We're going to take our public input that we've received to the needs assessment study, the, the bond program, and the, and the survey that we have running right now, uh, present that back at the work session, and make recommendations for uh, changes, work with our Park Board and get their input and what changes they recommend as well. And we will go back for a park board action item in December. And that would be when we seek the park board's endorsement of the plan. That is an, that both these, the work session and the December meeting are both open and the public are welcome to come in the next meeting as well. And I'll say that and fill out a comment card. Now the work session, that's when we're working with the park board. Uh, anybody can speak there, but it would probably be at the end of the meeting. And usually Sheila Hill, our, our chair of the park board will, um, will state, you know, she'll explain that at the park board meeting. But at the action item, that's when the public can speak right there, right when it's uh, on the floor for consideration. It, also in December, we'll go to our plan commission. Now this park recreation open space master plan is adopted into the city comprehensive plan by reference, so we need the plan commission's endorsement as well. And that's also a public meeting where the public can speak. And then we go to January, uh, we will seek our city council's adoption of the plan, January 15th. Um, again, uh, uh, it is a public meeting. Uh, public is invited to speak. It's uh, not a public hearing, but it is a, uh, it's a non-consent item. So anybody that wants to speak on it can fill out a comment card and, and go up and voice their support or concerns at that time. And uh, last, I, I just wanted to highlight again the, uh, the public opinion survey that is, it's available on our city parks webpage. The, um, also the 2004 master plan, the 2010 update, and the 2013 needs assessment are also linked here at the same spot. So if you go to City of Fort Worth website, parks and community services page, and and then click on master plans at the top. It's a link at the top left of the page there. You have access to all those documents. I put my email address on here. Feel free to contact me. Uh, it's also at the top of the blue sheet. So if you've already filled out a survey and you just want to take one of those blue sheets for the contact information, feel free to do that. 